I'm in Tony Stark and Iron Man 2 create a new element. So this is helpful because it, it will reinforce some of the ideas from that we have already learned. First of all, let's take care of some of the physical issues. Uh, he had to build a cyclotron, which if you saw the movie, you saw one. It's a ring, sort of entity, uh, which is possible. You, you could build one in your house. They could be extremely tiny or extremely big. So they could be as small to fit in your hand, or they can be uh, you know, a mile radius or something. So that, possible. Check. Uh, and we're assuming he was smart enough to do so. He seemed smart in the movie. Uh, another pro problem he would run into is the energy needed to run the cyclotron, which would be a heck of a lot of energy for the size that he had. But we'll assume he had some sort of energy source to build one. Okay. So again, in the background is his heart. I don't know, there's some metal in his heart, palladium or something, which I don't know if is necessarily toxic, but I know it gives you skin irritation. Uh, so, anyways, he had that. He, he didn't want to die, so he had to... His dad left him a secret message. I don't know if I'm not spoiling the movie for you. And to build a new element. Okay, so it's still cool if you, have, if you know that. So he had to build a new element to save him from cell phone dying. Uh, the other problem is uh, various supplies that he needs. So he need huge magnets uh, to make this thing run. I didn't see them on screen, so I we'll hope that they were off screen to make the thing to make the particles go in a circle. Uh, and then. Uh, Finally, uh, he was making a large particle, so what kind of radiation should he have expected? He should have expected alpha radiation. Alpha radiation. Uh, and in some parts of his body were unexposed, so I would expect that he would have got highly radiated after that incident, uh, which is not good. So he wanted to be avoid. He wanted to avoid being killed by the radiation. Okay, problems with new elements. Now, now getting to the element. Problems making a, a new element. It's unstable. So all new elements are going to be unstable. For example, I think they recently made. Uh, element 118, uh, which for it's only available in like microseconds or something like that. So they made uh, this new element, but in, in microseconds it was back disintegrated or it had uh, decayed. So it's very unstable. The second problem, it's radioactive. So we talked about that alpha radiation most likely that you would have to be careful of. So unstable radioactive. Unstable radioactive. Um, the as I kind of mentioned before, this is related to the radioactive. The half life is very short. So short half life, it decays very quickly. And then the the fourth problem is the amount. Typically, when people discover new elements, they make like five atoms. So he made enough to make this triangular fixture that went into his chest. So that was a lot of atoms. That was, uh, you know, 10 to the 30th atoms or something that you would have to So he found a really stable element for sure. Now, what was the element? Because they don't say it on the movie. So I think it was on the comic books, it's like vibranium or something. So what was the element? You know, we need to hypothesize how he did this. Well, the element would have to be doubly magic in order to have any possibility of making it because you want to give it the most stable chance possible. Let me go back to the magic numbers. Here's our magic numbers. These are just some of them. 
There's others. I think I didn't tell you last time. These can be, uh, these are experimentally uh, observed. So what are the stable nuclei that we noticed? But they could also be derived. They're also in funny places that I said last time. You see magic numbers. Uh, but you also see these numbers like in the, if you've heard of the mathematical device called the Pascal's Triangle. These are in there too. There are a lot of funny places you'll see these. But they have to have these numbers to give you the best chance of being stable. So I came up with a couple possibilities of what it could make since they didn't tell you on the movie. And you probably were curious what the heck element was that. <coughs> Uh, so, one candidate. Is this one? Could have been this one, but the problem is this was already made recently. It says un un quadium. This was already made, and it's very unstable. So, you didn't make that one. It could have been another set of magic numbers that you put together. Could have been this one. This is unbihexium. This is a possible candidate. This would have G electrons. You know, the S, P, D, F. This would have G electrons. It would be a 5G6. It could have been. These are getting huge, huge. This is unoctquadium. This is another one that has G electrons. This would be a 6G14. Uh, and then one uh, isotope of this also having G electrons. The, so it's also called an aquadium. Would be 534. So one of those is what Tony Stark made. All these are doubly magic. So both having double magic. I had often wondered, and if you notice, when I first learned this, how can you have this be a magic number if, what's the problem with 114 for a number of protons? It's greater than 83. So what that really means, and the same goes with the neutrons, what that really means is that though it might be radioactive, it's slightly not as radioactive as it could be if it didn't have a magic number. So there's a spectrum of radioactivity. Uh, so when you have magic numbers above 83, especially for the protons, and you can go higher with magic numbers, uh, as you saw me do. As you go above that, we're saying it's slightly less radioactive, except for the one thing that Tony Stark made. And so he survived, and, well, I can't tell you the ending, but he did stuff after that. <laughs> have to watch the movie.